Hi there everybody, welcome back to this in-depth video on COPD. This video consists out of two parts. The first part will cover an overview, what is COPD, what's the pathophysiology and what are some risk factors. And the second part will cover symptoms of COPD, severity, diagnose and how to treat COPD. So stick around if you want to learn more. I also made a shorter, more to the point video that might be more suitable for patients or laymen. You can find a link to that video in the description. If you're meeting for the first time, my name is Raul. I'm a last year medical student making weekly medical videos. So if you like my content, don't forget to subscribe. And before we start, a little disclaimer. This video is meant purely informational. This is not medical advice. And always ask your own doctor if you're looking for medical advice. So let's start. This brings us to the slides. COPD stands for Chronic Obstructive Pulmonary Disease. And it's an obstructive lung disease, much like asthma, which consists out of two main components chronic bronchitis on the one hand and emphysema on the other hand. If we're looking at the numbers of COPD, we saw that in 2015, more than 170 million people had COPD. That's 2.4% of the entire global population. Of all those patients, most were older than 40. There were equal amounts, male and female, and it led to 3.2 million deaths. So it has a lot of consequences worldwide. COPD can be seen as a spectrum. It's caused by two main components, emphysema, and chronic bronchitis and every patient that has COPD has a different amount of emphysema or chronic bronchitis so it differs between the patients. Patients with mostly emphysema complaints are called pink puffers. This is because they have difficulties breathing but are well perfused and therefore look pink. They have a barrel chest and they have muscle wasting. This is because they have difficulties breathing and need to work extra hard to keep in and exhaling. They also breathe through pursed lips. On the other hand, you have patients with mostly chronic bronchitis as a component of COPD. And those patients are called blue bloaters. They are poorly ventilated and poorly perfused and this leads to cyanide. So low saturation of oxygen, which makes their skin turn bluish. Those patients also have peripheral edema and they have a raised jugular venous pressure, which you can see in their neck. This is due to the right-sided heart failure. So this brings us to the pathophysiology of COPD. And COPD is a chronic inflammation process caused by the inhalation of irritants, mostly cigarette smoke, but also air pollution. If you inhale cigarette smoke, or air pollution for that matter, it comes into your lungs and that creates a reaction, at least to the production of free radicals and then to oxidative stress of all the cells in your lungs. This leads to the activation of inflammatory cells and this starts the chronic inflammation process. And it goes on and on as long as you keep inhaling those irritants. In this process, almost all your immune cells are involved. Neutrophil granulocytes, macrophages, TC1 cells, lymphocytes and even eosinophils. The chronic inflammation leads to two things. Breakdown of your lung tissue, this is the emphysema, and also to inflammation of your small airways. And this is the obstructive bronchiolitis. Those two components together cause irreversible damage of your lungs. It also leads to air trapping, to poor ventilation because it's obstruct and it leads to VQ mismatch. And I want to elaborate on that a little bit more now. I first want to start off with the pathophysiology of the pink puffers. So how do you get emphysema when you have COPD? Emphysema is mostly caused by the inflammation process in your lungs. It leads to the activation of your macrophages and those start making proteases and cytokines. Those proteases lead to the breakdown of elastin. And elastin is a component of your alveolar wall that helps it to expand but also to recall when you exhale. So by breaking down the elastin you have a decreased recall and therefore a decreased ventilation. It's harder for air to get in and out of your lungs. In addition, those proteases also lead to the destruction of the capillary bed around your alveolar and therefore also decrease the perfusion. The cytokines which are released by the macrophages lead to the attraction of neutrophils. Those neutrophils migrate to the alveoli and they start producing elastase. Elastase also leads to the breakdown of elastin and therefore also decreases the recall and also decreases the ventilation. Elastase also leads to the breakdown of the alveolar wall. This creates bigger air sacs called bulli in which air trapping can occur. And this leads to an increased and expiratory volume. And this also explains why people with emphysema have a barrel chest. This is because of the bulli, the air trapping. And people with emphysema need to work much harder for their oxygen because of the decreased ventilation and perfusion. 
This is why they use accessory muscles like your scalene muscle, which leads to overuse, leads to muscle wasting, and even leads to cachexia at the long term. As a recap, emphysema leads to a decreased ventilation and perfusion. This leads to a VQ deficit, and this then causes hypoxemia and hypercapnia. And this brings us to the second component of COPD, chronic bronchitis or the blue bloaters. Again, this is mostly caused by inflammation and the inflammation in your lungs leads to two components. First of all, mucociliary dysfunction and this leads to bronchoconstriction of your small airways, your bronchioles but even your alveoli. Secondly, it leads to overactivation of your goblet cells and this leads to hypersecretion of mucus. Both cause an obstructive effect in your lungs. This leads to difficulties breathing, leads to wheezing, which is a squeaky breathing, and to a productive cough. Those are the main components of CPD. So in chronic bronchitis, you're mostly dealing with an airway obstruction. And this makes it difficult for air to be ventilated in your alveoli. This leads to an alveolar hypoxia, a VQ mismatch, and eventually to hypoxemia and hypercapnia. And this causes all the classical symptoms of a blue bloater. So respiratory acidosis, polycythemia, cyanose, that's why they're called blue bloaters, and lastly, vasoconstriction. This is because of the alveolar hypoxia. So some alveolar are obstructed, they will not be ventilated properly and therefore will not be functional. Your body's response would be vasoconstriction. It limits the blood flow to inactive alveoli and brings it to active alveoli. However, this vasoconstriction leads to pulmonary hypertension. This can lead to hypertrophia of the right ventricle and this can cause your classic core pulmonale. This explains the increased juggle of vein pressure as well. Also, because of the core pulmonale, less blood will be pumped through the left side of your heart. So this leads to decreased output of your left ventricle, therefore a decreased circulatory volume. This will lead to RAS activation, fluid retention and therefore to more hypertension. So it gets worse and worse. So this was what I had to say about blue bloaters and pink puffers. Let's go to the risk factors now. In order to develop COPD, there need to be several decades of exposure to any of these risk factors. The most common one is tobacco smoking. 20% of all smokers will eventually get COPD, but of the lifelong smokers, 50% will develop COPD. So it's a major component in the development of COPD. And of all the COPD patients, 80 to 95% even were smokers or are smoking now. If we look in globally, air pollution also plays an important role in contributing to COPD, mostly because of poorly ventilated heating or cooking on fires. In some minor cases, genetics can also contribute to COPD, mostly the alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. This causes 1 to 5% of all cases of COPD. Other risk factors are low birth weight, recurrent airway infections and a low socioeconomic class. This is the end of my two-part series on COPD. In the next video we cover symptoms of COPD, how to diagnose it and how to treat it. So see you next video.